I'm going to tear down and explain this tire pressure monitoring system, or TPMS, and replace the battery. And then you can decide to do this or not on your vehicle. These TPMSs are safety sensors that alert you when your car or truck's tire is low. Unfortunately, these are inside the rim of each tire and are a bit hard to get out as you normally have to separate the rim from the tire using some kind of a bead breaker tool or alternative. Once you have it out, grab these tools and supplies. You'll need a smartphone repair toolkit with various small screw bits, a valve core kit, and if replacing the battery, you'll additionally need a few small cutting knives, a pointed tip, optionally a putty knife, as well as some silicone, a solder gun, and solder, and a battery, of course. I'll put all these tools and supplies in the description below. Please mention in the comments if you have any other good tools to use that I missed that could help others when working on this project. Oh, and a quick like and subscribe is also much appreciated. There are a bunch of videos on this channel that will probably help you out, so please subscribe. This weighs 43 grams or one and a half ounces. This is good to know because if replacing the battery, the weight of this TPMS can affect the current balance of the wheel. I want to try to get this back to the same weight if possible. Otherwise, I will have to get it rebalanced, which is good to do anyway, especially if you notice some balance issues. Now, let's first get started by removing the valve stem from this TPMS. I'm going to remove the valve core with a multi-valve tool. Normally, you won't replace this unless you have a leak in your valve stem or if it broke off. By the way, I have a separate video on just replacing the valve stem and how to temporarily drive with a broken valve stem. I'll put those interesting videos in the description below as well. Anyway, these mini valve cores are what allow air to go in and out of your tire. Moving on, I'm just taking off the nut that secures the TPMS to the rim. This is actually on the outside of the car and you'll remove this with a ratchet and socket. Now grab a mini flathead screwdriver and lightly pry off this rubber grommet. Twist it out. Next, remove the retaining washer. Same thing, just twist and pull it off. Now there is usually a clip or screw on the back that secures the valve stem to the TPMS. In this case, there is a flap on here that can be folded back. This one I'm tearing open and won't be reusing, which is why the flap is not present. Anyway, grab your mini screwdriver kit, and in this case, I'm using a Torx T6 screwdriver to remove this mini screw. Now just wiggle out the valve stem. If you have found this interesting so far, please hit the like button. Then let's get ready to tear this apart and get that battery out. I'm going to use a combination of pointed tips and some cutting knives. Be very careful. If you do this because you have a very high chance of cutting yourself. I am striking the blade away from myself. Anyway, I'm trying to remove the silicone piece by piece. Very tedious. You can now see a piece of the battery. I'll remove a little bit more and be right back. Okay. Now, the battery doesn't have much silicone right now, and there is some silicone on the left, which is where the circuit board and chips are. There is a battery tab right here. I'm going to go back and forth, pry up on this until it pops off. You also might be able to solder it off. There you go. Now, in case you're wondering if this is removed yet, nope, one more side, the back side. So I'll pry this up a little bit and now you can see the other tab holding the battery in place. Same thing again, I'll pry this up with the tip of my putty knife. Got it. Here it is, finally the battery. It's a 2450 3-volt battery. There's still some silicone on the bottom, and I'll pick
take some of it out. Next, I'll put a battery in and I'll solder this in place. Remember the position of the battery and specifically where each tab connects to each side of the battery. I'm going to remove some more silicone on the bottom here. Be right back. Putting this, soldering this on, fold this back. I'm not the best at soldering, but for the purpose of this video, it should be good enough. By the way, I noticed the solder doesn't stick well unless it's on the tab. Once the back side is done, push it in place. And now, to do the front side. Now, I waited about 30 minutes so the battery could cool down from the hot solder. Anyway, now I'll seal this back up with some silicone caulk. Put a decent amount on, and then spread it smooth with a putty knife or scraper. Make sure you let this dry for a couple hours or so. Here's how it looks. By the way, you can tell where the battery is on here because it is on the right side. Notice the circle curve-like shape, and on the left is more rectangle-like, which is where the circuit board lies. Quickly reinstalling this is by putting the valve stem back in and fold the flap if present. Then secure the screw with a T6 bit or similar. Next, put the washer back in, followed by the rubber grommet. Just keep turning it in. Next, if the core was removed, screw it in by hand at first, then use the multi-core valve tool to tighten it. Now this nut will be put on after this TPMS is put back in the wheel rim. And then of course, you'll put air in the tire and then put the dust cap back on. Before I put this back in, I'll weigh it. And lucky me, it's 43 grams like before I tore this apart. So this was a lot of work to change the battery, about 30 minutes prying out that silicone. In fact, let me know if you think a chemical like WD-40, vinegar, or mineral spirits would have helped remove this quicker. I would like to know. In my opinion, removing the battery is not worth time and it can be expensive. It really is best to just get a replacement sensor and to reprogram these. However, if just your valve stem is bad, then maybe it may make sense to just replace the valve stem. I previously did that, and I'll leave that video in the description. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you think it's worth changing and why, or if you should just buy a new one. I think we would all like to know. Hopefully you enjoyed this teardown and better understand the pieces that make up this tire pressure monitoring system. If so, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more cool teardowns or better ways to fix your car or truck. Thanks for watching.